Oh, well, <clears throat> he hello, hello. A little bit late, but I made it. Oh, I can see Ed has posted yesterday that he's missed the show lately, but um, yes, I'm usually doing Tuesdays and Fridays right now. At this point, at this point, I was a little late today. I know I'm late. I know you know, you know I'm late. If you're here, oh, it's asking me what's on my mind. What's on my mind? You're on my mind. Um, now I think it says people are here. Uh, I know you know you oh, know I'm late. Turning it down. Oh, Cindy, I see you're here. Craig, Keith, hello to you in Florida. Joan, oh God, what happened? Hello. How could I? How could I have misplaced this thing? Oh my Lord! Happy Tuesday. Can you get a letter from Grandma today, Rachel? I had been thinking about that, and uh, I think the answer is yes, you can. Yes, you can get a letter from Grandma today. Uh, oh. What happened? <laughs> yes, you can get a letter from Grandma today. Um, so, uh, where are they? They're down here. So, I've got the letters from Grandma. Oh, got the children's Bible. A um, little bit... <laughs> Glad I made it too, Flavia. A uh, little late. Better late than not here. That's that's all we can say, right? Um, Rich, uh, pre-hump day, exactly. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and hello to you, Laura. So, what have I got? Oh, well, last week, and last week on the Bible, we had the Israelites turn against God. What's today? Naboth's vineyard. Sounds good. We're heading into some parts of the Bible that I don't think I'm I'm quite as familiar with. Oh, I, I usually I turn on. Let's turn the Santa on. I can't believe the Santa's not on. There we go. How's that? That's nice. Um, David, greetings to you, sir. Um, so today, big day in uh, Jerrytown, Jerryland, uh, Jerry headquarters. Um, me and <coughs> or Lady Jerry and I. I, I never know. Me and Lady Jerry, Lady, Lady Jerry and I, Lady Jerry and me, we, the Jerrys, drove up the coast to go to the beach. Uh, Belinda was feeling well enough today and, and really looking forward to a trip to the beach, so we went out. She just waded in up to her knees, but I went in for my swim today, and we laid on the beach for almost an hour, and then got a bit of, uh, got a bit of food on the way back in Malibu. And that's why I was a little bit late. We misjudged how long it was going to take to do all those things and get back for the show. And Lady Jerry said that she might come in and say hello, but she's a little Sandy. I'm doing the show with uh, Sandy, Sandy Butt. And Sandy Butt, I don't know if you remember her from the 70s, but uh, she had a few hits. Um, all right, so today in the Bible, oh my God, I just changed the batteries in the reading lamp and it seems to be fritzing. Um, is still in, still enjoying unusually high temps in Wisconsin, Cindy. Yeah, might be 80 on Saturday. Wow, that's amazing. Sharon, greetings to you. Uh, hello, Sister Sue. Good to see you here. Um, we should catch up. I, I mean, I got a lot of things. I got a lot of things on my to-do list. Um, but right now, eyes on the prize. Let's take a look at what's going on in the Bible. Naboth's Vineyard. I hadn't heard of Naboth in the vineyard before. Um, it's a vineyard owned by a man named Naboth. Next to the palace of King Ahab in Samaria was a vineyard. The king wanted to buy the vineyard and offered the owner Naboth a good price for it. But Naboth refused. Mm. I don't think Naboth understands how kings work. But, okay, the Lord will not let me part with my inheritance, he told the king, which sounds like some BS. I don't think that's something that the Lord gets into the middle of. Um, Ahab, who was used to being obeyed while well, he's the king, was enraged. He flung himself down on his bed, turned his face to the wall, and refused both food and drink. Oh, it's a pouty king. <laughs> I can't buy the vineyard. I'm so, I'm not even going to, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not hungry. Um, uh, refused food and drink. His wife, Jezebel, mm, was worried. Please tell me what's troubling you, she begged him. But when she heard what the matter was, she laughed. <laughs> now you may eat and drink with a light heart. I'll see that you get your vineyard. In fact, it is as good as yours already. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
Jezebel. I mean, I know. I think we're familiar with the story of a Jezebel, but I think she's going to get in Naboth's pants to get this vineyard. But we'll see. Jezebel wrote to all the officials and noblemen of the city, signing letters with Ahab's name and settling and sealing them with the royal seal. In them, she gave instructions that a day of fasting should be held. Naboth was to be set up in a position of great importance. Two men were to sit opposite him and accuse him of speaking against God, a crime that carried a sentence of death. Well, God usually takes care of this stuff himself. I don't think he needs King uh, Ahab to do this, especially pouty King Ahab. Everything happened as Jezebel had planned. Naboth was accused, seized, taken outside the city walls, and stoned to death. <laughs> Holy crap, I didn't see that. I thought Naboth was going to get a... <laughs> I thought Naboth was going to get some sex in the back seat of a, a camel caravan, and uh, he was just going to sell the vineyard to the king. But no. Then, then Jezebel says, Now the vineyard is, is yours, said Jezebel, in triumph to her husband. Ahab lost no time in going to the vineyard, anxious to inspect his new property, but he found he was not alone. God had spoken to the prophet Elijah and sent him to rebuke the king. Yeah, well, thanks, God. After I get killed for not giving up my inheritance as you wanted, I do appreciate that you send somebody by to make the king feel shitty about it. Uh, this vineyard has been bought with the death of an innocent man, thundered Elijah. And just as the dogs lick his blood from the roadside, so will they lick yours. Wow, Elijah doesn't mess around when he's given threats. Very gangster. For your death and that of Jezebel will be cruel and violent as Naboth's. Wow. God, a little bit late, but he's got an extra couple of dollars because he's going to be killing Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab was appalled when he heard the prophet's words and was overcome with shame. He tore his clothes dressed himself in sackcloth to show his remorse, refused to eat. Well, that's what he does when he gets the vineyard and when he doesn't get the vineyard, and fell into deep despair. When God saw that Ahab was truly sorry that what he had done, the Lord spoke again to Elijah. Because this man uh, has seen the error of his ways, I'll be merciful to him. He may live out his days in peace, but because of the serious wrong he'd done, there will come a time when disaster will fall upon his descendants. Okay, well, thanks, God, for stepping in. But uh, that doesn't help Naboth. And, uh, but guess what? I know that story was a lot, but we got a surprise guest. Look who's here. It's hello, Lady hello, Jerry. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Fresh from the beach. How's it going? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to go over to the neighbors and have a... Uh and, and drink my green cocktail over there. But I wanted to come and say hello, hello. Um, all is well. We just went on a date up to Malibu. It was so yeah, nice. Yeah, we had such a good time. Yeah, we went to... I like you got your shades oh, on. Magical. Are going to take your shades off so people can see your crazy eyes? Well, you want to see... Okay, the Mad-Eye Moody Eye is this one. That's what how Jake described. Still have to um, manually blink it because it doesn't, doesn't can't blink on its own. But it uh, can almost shut all the way and yeah. it's out of stitches. This one just had a retinal tear and I had to have it lasered yesterday. I mean, as if there's not enough SHIT going on with my poor eyes. I had an age-related retinal tear, which was really, that was a bit unfortunate. But we went to this lovely guy, Dr. Lazar. We got it fixed within 24 hours of Dr. Susan Jaffe, a friend who's a comedic comedy writer. Are you kidding? Within 24 hours, we went yes. into Dr. Lazar's office and we were out the door with a laser surgery to eye in under an hour. No, no, I mean, she, Maybe an hour and a she half. was over here on Sunday and diagnosed that I had a retinal well, we tear. We went in on Monday. At yeah, 6 no, I know what you meant. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. And then the laser's super fast. So this one just got some a bit of, you know, the tail ends of blatheritis on the, with the, uh, the stars and then. Mad Eye Moody hopefully will start to blink on her own soon. I mean, it's just a bit of a pain in the bomb bomb. And she gets uh, sore what still. are you drinking there? Well, this has got spinach, ginger, turmeric, coconut water, chia seeds, parsley, cucumber. Disgustingly, disgustingly healthy. so good. You have to be careful when you're on chemo because you can't really eat that much raw. So I can't make it with kale. Well, everybody's shouting good. out. Dave, oh. uh, Dave, um... Adrian Hobson says hi. Oh, Adrian! I'm so sorry I missed you on Friday. I meant to be here, but I was on with a uh, this with the uh, who's it? Health insurance and um, CVS trying to get a new chemo drug. 
Rachel, is, hooray. Flavia oh, says, hi. love. she loves your blouse. Hi. Yes, well, do you see what it says? My lovely friend Skylar gave this to me because she would like me to persist for as long as possible. And that's my plan. I'm feeling I'm going to be persisting, people. I'm going to be persisting. Yeah. So what do you think? The, the facial uh, nerve palsy, but better, right? Yeah. I mean, oh. we just if we just put a bit of tape and tape up my left cheek. great. Right? You still can't really drink with a straw, though. That's no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jake over to go get up for me yesterday. I said, don't put it in a glass. Just give me a straw, Jerry. And then I put the straw and I'm like... <laughs> I can't use a straw yet, guys. Maybe if I done it out the side of my mouth. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love you. Oh, um, well, solid effort today, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you really came in, <laughs> yeah. went out of the park, yeah. and now you got to go. Yeah, now I've got to go because uh, yeah, because yeah. I've got a friend down the road who's yeah, yeah this got cancer some... doesn't sleep. You. <laughs> oh well, I. <laughs> I had a big sleep last night, which was really good. That's why I feel so good today. And I went on a date with my beloved. That was super nice. Yeah, so Dave, cheers, you guys. Dave says you seem pretty back to normal, so that's awesome. Mm. Yeah. I am most of the time. I mean, sometimes I'm a bit of a blubby mess. You know, I have had a patch of hair fall out, but, you know, the radiation, they said, would take it out up on my temple. And it's about that big, but it's behind my left ear. So that's quite good, because if I had a big bald spot on the side of my head, well, Jake said it'd be really good for sympathy and free meals. But, yeah. I, I, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't on the side of my head. It's just back here. It did give me a bit of a Well, when your hair when does fall out, maybe we should save it, and I could make a whole another wife. Out Starting of with her hair? Well, so, yeah. Well, when you're busy, then I'll just hang no. out with the other the, we'll, we'll the make decoy a lady, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll make a nice little toupee for you with blonde a, hair. Oh, I'm going to give you a blonde hair toupee. Oh, You'll I thought nice you were saying it, right? I'm losing my hair. Have I missed a patch? Yeah. I love I you okay? guys. I, I'll All try right. and come on Friday for a longer visit. Okay. And I did mean to be here longer today, but I we got held up. And yeah, well, no. Uh, well, that's what we can't you take what you can get. Yeah, okay. Love you guys. Laura says she hasn't heard enough F-bombs. <laughs> Should I come back and do you want to come back in and do one? Okay, what the fucking fuck? Okay, fuck this shit show. I've got this great journal called Fuck This Shit Show, a gratitude <laughs> journal for tired ass women. <laughs> Cheers. Was that enough F bombs? I think I think that was quite good, right? Oh, yeah, fuck off. Yeah, no, you fuck off. I'm gonna <laughs> fuck off, and I'm gonna fuck right back. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, maybe not fuck right back, um, but you know. Well, the subtitle generator doesn't even say the f bomb. <laughs> there you go, Dave. Well, you got what you got. Your money's worth there. <laughs> and now, Rachel, uh, Rachel uh, as you requested. I mean, I think we're already a little bit over the moon. It makes you feel happy. Makes me feel happy too. Um, and now that we're all over the moon, I think it's time for a letter from Grandma. And uh, as you requested, um, and this one. I can't remember which ones. I think that it's been a while since we've done Letter from Grandma, so I can't remember which side the ones are that, um, I think this is, the, this is the right side. <laughs> I know I've read them all one time already. All right, today's Letter from Grandma, 62584. There's a couple of clippings in here. I'm going to spare those, uh, spare you those this time through. Uh, good Lord. I'll have to do that after the show. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, here we go. Letter from Grandma. June 25th, 1984. I'm about to turn 24 years old. Um, <clears throat> thank you for making the tape of your comedy skit for your grandparents. Oh, God. Yeah, I made a cassette tape of one of my sets at one of these comedy clubs. Sent it to my grandparents. I have... I, I just can't even imagine what they thought of it. People who grew up, spent most of their lives farming in Iowa, they, they don't know what comedy... Anyway, your dad brought the tape to Marshalltown, June 16, and we were there at the villa at 1 p.m. <laughs> uh, Grandma Jay smiled. Or Grandpa Jay smiled. Grandma Jay was tired, and I guess naps at 1 p.m., but she stayed awake most of the time. <laughs> she gets some uh, meds, which may may make her drowsy, too. That's that's often the reason that people are not able to under, understand or enjoy my show, is that their meds make them drowsy. Uh, <laughs> she looks like she's lost a little weight. Well, we're quickly off the tape that I sent them. Uh, Charlotte took a picture of you on the TV. 
<laughs> we saw it twice. Oh, maybe this was a videotape. Uh, I wish you would think about school. Again, with the school. I'm 61, Grandma. It all worked out. Uh, it just rains so often and so many tornadoes this year. Yeah, well, wait till climate change happens. And floods, too, here in the state. Hard on the farmers' fields in those places. I'm glad your comedy skits are going so well. I showed the card you sent to Grandma, read it, and showed her the, uh, O and arrow, also, uh, Grandpa. I showed the card to Gene Kroger, that's their neighbor. Dennis is working for the Des Moines Register and told us and that he was one of my, he was lived across the street from my grandmother, is my same age, told us uh, he hoped he didn't make any mistakes. Another shower and hail hit at 6.30 a.m. June 26th. Lots of love, Grandma. It is very warm this afternoon. So all of that in this week's letter from Grandma. I know we haven't read a letter from Grandma lately, and I had been really thinking about that today, Rachel, when I read that uh, you were interested in the letter from Grandma, but I, I had just sort of thought, man, I feel so grown up and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> old. <laughs> like, there are people my age now who are grandpas, and uh, I just couldn't imagine reading a letter from Grandma, but there you go. I enjoyed it. So, things so it doesn't always turn out how you expect, does it, Mr. Predicto? Do things always turn out as you expect, Mr. Predicto? That is a likely outcome. <laughs> it's not. Well, most of the time they turn out how you expect, maybe, Mr. Pre I don't know. We need an interpreter for Mr. Predicto. So today, I've got road trip table topics. Uh, these Rachel sent us these to use in our in our trip in the Kimbo. And uh, we did have a look at some of them. What's the worst hotel you've stayed in? The worst hotel I've stayed in. It was in, um, I think it was in Chico, California for a gig. And I think I mentioned this on the show before, but it was in Chico, California for a gig. And uh, I went for a swim in the pool and it had moss on the bottom. You know, I got in one end. You couldn't really even, I don't even, you have to be a man of a certain age to get in a pool, a, a hotel swimming pool that you can't see the bottom of. And uh, I was a man of that age. I got in, went for a swim in that hotel swimming pool, couldn't see the bottom. And guess what? It was covered with mossy algae. Terrible. Terrible. Worst hotel? Hojo in Portland. Michael. Interesting. Um, Checking in for, from uh, from Europe. Vienna, you're in Vienna now. Well, Grandma died four weeks ago at the age of 96. No more letters. Well, I'm sorry, Michael, but if this show has shown you anything, uh, you save those letters. You can read them over and over and get years of enjoyment out of them. I would say we've got to be 30 years past when my grandmother died. I know that doesn't make it feel any better, and I'm not making light of your situation. I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, but, uh, David, you stayed in a motel, a motel in Vermont, uh, that gave, <laughs> gave off Bates Motel vibes. Wow. That's, that's murdery. Hmm. Murdery. A nice murdery hotel. Well, I never stayed in a hotel where I thought I was going to get murdered that I can remember. I mean, maybe I did. I can't remember it. How do you forget a thing like that? Um, can you forget a thing like that? Wow, these these ones are pretty good. These these ones are really more personal questions. What are your favorite Crayola colors? That's not a personal question. Um, I remember always when I was a kid that that flesh tone crayon, at least the, the my flesh tone crayon. Not obviously we all have different flesh tones, but the the crayon that was supposed to be the flesh tone of my type of human being. That one was, that one, I wouldn't say it was my favorite, but that was the one that would often get exhausted first, because uh, when you're a kid, you're doing a lot of coloring people. Um, there's a hotel in Put-In Bay, Ohio, that has a pool that will give you all the STDs at once. Wow, Dave, that is, yeah, the hotel pool, 
kids love them, but I have to say, as an adult, uh, a little bit dodgy. Flavia, yeah, the flesh tone crayon was a little too pink. Uh, as you recall, as I also recall, it was just a weird kind of crayon. Like, uh, but, it, but it got used up because as a kid, you're like, well, I'm, this is a person, so they got to be this color. And to be fair to myself, a lot of that, my crayoning childhood was in Iowa and Wisconsin, and all the people at that time <laughs> were the color of that crayon. Uh, so there you go. How's that? How's that for a Monday? Um, pretty good? Everyone enjoying themselves? Yes. Um, I wish I could say it was time for another question from the question box. Um, and I can. Oh, wow. Dreams really do come true. Um, that's not, I think I've done that one already. Have I read all these questions? Which sports team has the best mascot? Oh, well, there's there's a lot of problematic mascots nowadays with sports teams. <laughs> the, the Notre Dame mascot seems problematic to me. Um, the Fighting Irishman, this looks like an angry leprechaun. Oh, I don't know about that one. Um, but uh, which team has the best mascot? I have to say, I do like the animal mascots, the tigers. Although, uh, Fanula's, the school mascot of the high school that Fanula goes to, Santa Monica, is uh, the Vikings. And I do think the Vikings are pretty great. Oh, Bob, you're saying uh, Michigan State, the Spartans? Yes. That, I do, I, the Spartans are pretty good. The Spartans are pretty good. I do, I do like the Spartans. Um, so yeah, the people mascots, Spart Spartans and Vikings, those have to be the, the my two top faves. Um, <laughs> yeah, Rich, the Syracuse, the Orange Men. I'm not sure what that means, the Orange Men, but uh, it could have some weird Protestant, uh, or is it, yeah, Protestant uh, overtones to it. I'm not sure. Um, Michigan State was your alma mater, Bob? Yes, well, I guess so. Dave, boosters for the ones you already have. Oh, oh, STDs. Yeah, I'm about ready to get my uh, COVID booster. I think I'm going to do it because uh, Lady Jerry's vulnerable. Worst hotel was White Horse in Basel, Switzerland. Announced as a family hotel and turned out to be a bordello. Oh, Michael. Wow. Well, that is a... That is I don't even know why you'd do that as a joke. That's problematic. That's bad. You need a, I don't know if you can get a, ho a degree in hotel restaurant management over there in Europe, but that's a degree that you can get here. Even when I was in college, you could get that degree. I don't know why I say that, but I, nowadays you can get a degree in a lot of things. But I uh, thought it was a family hotel. Turned out to be a bordello <laughs> this fall on HBO. Heard about a high school in the Midwest whose mascot was a tractor and the cheerleaders were the oilettes. <laughs> That's a good one, Rachel. Well, uh, what was Rich, Richland, <coughs> Washington? The mascot was like an atomic bomb, a mushroom cloud, I thought. Uh, Flavia, love to all, you have to get back to work. I don't blame you. What the, what the F is a Hoya, Georgetown, the Hoyas. I'm not sure what a Hoya is either. That's a job for Google. It's too bad Ed's not here today. Um, what happens at Put In Bay stays in put it at Put In Bay. Well, you'd like to think once you put it in, uh, it's going to stay there, but you never know. You see what I did? Sort of naughty. Uh, not a joke. The Bordello Hotel canceled it and stayed in a home for ex junkies instead during a fair. <laughs> oh my God, Michael! You guys in Europe really know how to party. We can't wait to get over there, Lady Jerry and I. Uh, to take a vacation. Well, maybe, I don't know how we'll get all the way to Europe, but we want to go next summer. We're hoping to go to uh, uh, England, Scotland, and Ireland on a trip to see about our daughter being able to um, go to some college over there. Um, you skipped the pool and the hotel, Joan. Well, there you go at Put-In Bay. Good for you. Smart thinking. Smart thinking. Um, I don't really want to go to... I wish... Uh, this is, again... I haven't uh, really even looked at the... Ouija was kind enough to send me my own um, 
soil moisture, moisture tester and I'm sad to say I haven't used it at all. You can see it's in the original packaging. Worst hotel story you heard, Bob, was going on a cruise, Pam and going on a cruise, so they booked a room at a place near there. It turned out to be an adult motel with mirrored ceiling, nonstop porno on the TV, and a Taiwan basket. I'm not sure what a Taiwan basket is, um, but uh, I'm not sure I do want to know. So the soil mo moisture monitor, uh, this is the unboxing of the soil moisture monitor. Um, I can see that it comes, well, you're supposed to do this, in, you know, just comes in this nice box and it's a three in one soil moisture um, monitor. The directions are right on the box. It comes with its own manual, but I don't think you need the manual if you can read the box. Oh, wow, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. Switch to moisture, uh, PRT light positions according to demand. Insert the probe into the soil about two to four inches. Adjust the position of the probe until the pointer on the dial swings slightly. Check the moisture pH light levels on the dial after 60 seconds. Hmm. Remove the probe from the soil and wipe it clean after each use. Well, that's good advice um, no matter what you're doing. Uh, remove it from the remove everything you're using from the soil after you use it and wipe it clean. Wow, well, this is pretty deluxe. The moisture tester, this is what it looks like out of the box. And uh, I'm going to do some moisture testing uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit later, not today. I don't know what light, I don't know what light means. What does that mean? Uh, probably needs batteries. Does it need batteries? Oh, god. I guess it probably does need batteries, and I don't know how to put them in here. Well, I have to wait for Ouija. Oh, well, that's what that's where the that's the that's where the comprehensive manual is going to come in handy. Teach you how to change change the batteries, or maybe it's magnetic, or it works off the polarity of the Earth. Uh, <laughs> so preview of things to come uh, next week on the daily briefing. I'm going to give you a. A review of the usage of the soil moisture meter I hope that's my, that's my dream dreams really do come true though here on the daily briefing and uh, if that wasn't true it would not be time for seize the day seize the day is a little bit of a dream that always comes true here on the daily briefing it's time to seize the day um, and uh, I will if God willing be here on Friday um, he doesn't really have a lot to do with it but you don't want to get on his bad side or he lets the king kill you and then take vengeance on your behalf, which is okay. Socrates, today's Seize the Day is brought to you by Socrates. Well, it's brought to you by Rachel, as always, but it's, uh, it's by Socrates. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. That's a pretty good one, Socrates. That's how you get to be famous for thousands of years, is by saying shit like that. Um, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old. It's a funny sentence structure. <laughs> focus your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Now, in modern times, or motivational speaking wise, I might do it the other way around. Focus all your energy on building the new, not on fighting the old. Um, but who am I to rewrite Socrates? I'm Jake Johansson, everybody. Thank you guys for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be nice to a jerk. And whatever you do, don't give up. There'll be plenty of time to give up later. But first, before the end of the show, it's time to read Scott Weston. What have you got to say? Oh, and happy birthday. I think he had a birthday. Am I wrong? I think he had a birthday. I went to a Weston Inn, tried to get my free room, telling them they misspelled the name on the sign. Didn't work, but you got. But at Motel 6, they left the light on for you. Okay, well, I, I grabbed the show to a hall. I pulled over. I pulled over for that one. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Happy birthday, everybody. Um, I'll see you guys all on Friday. My intention is to be here on Friday. All right. Love to love you guys.